Security challenge escalates up north and Zamfara State is getting the most of it. In Imo State, Governor Rochas Okorocha said the Independent National Electoral Commission lacks the power to withhold his certificate of return. We'll know where that drama has been. This is PLOS Politics and I am Felicity Ezewiki. There is tension in Zamfara town as bandits were lynched, staff were abducted from a school and Musa Omar, the district head of Daura, kidnapped by four unidentified gunmen. What is happening with the security up north? I'm joined by a legal practitioner, Olawole Shako. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, it's a pleasure. And of course, Alesta Wilkos, a political analyst. Pleasure to have you join us. It's always my utmost pleasure to be here. Thank you. Let me start with you. Okay. The news has been awash with so much kidnapping. The Ubet Shamans and, uh, and the daughter, the Kaduna Abuja uh, Highway. Uh, of recent, we heard that the road, an eyewitness report from a news agency uh, correspondent said the roads, they had traffic for over four hours because mm. cars were abandoned wow. from people fleeing uh, from bandits. And just yesterday, Mm. The in-law to the president was a kidnap. My question is, what's making the rise? What's inspiring the rise in kidnapping in this country? Okay, um, thank you very much. I, I just say that um, for me, the rise in kidnappings in Nigeria or in that part of Nigeria currently is because of the lack of political will, you understand, to actually fight this monster head on. You know, a situation where um, I, I would like to believe that in a, in a climb where you're really interested in solving a problem like that, your service chiefs will be, re you read the riot act to the service chiefs, and you know, and you actually get them, you know, it's not about administrative steps, you know, you change a police commissioner or something as mundane as that. That yeah. has already happened. Yeah, it's a, yeah, 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 in, in Kaduna means. and in some other places. That is an administrative change. You understand, we need to actually see you know, there, there are some hard steps you take that would actually, you know, serve as a deterrent. You understand? For people who come out and say, okay, uh, there's really no punishment or, you know, we can get away with it, we get a ransom, you know, we get a richer, there's no serious, you know, security structure in place. You get, so all of that is, it boils down to a lack of political will, you understand? And I would lay that squarely at the, um, the feet of those that we have elected to ensure we have a safe and secure Nigeria. Um, it's their failure. Well, we're having a conversation before we came on, and we're talking about the situation in the South South. Uh, mm. We also have uh, cases of kidnapping and banditry up there. Mm. And, you know, compared to what's in the North at the moment, what's your take on the rising cases and the focus on the North? Yeah, uh, for me, really, um, yeah, failure in leadership, failure in architecture, school architecture. Um, I think. Our security architecture has been overstretched mm -hmm. in the last uh, 10 years. Let's say actively, maybe in the last seven, eight, nine years. Um, it's not. Sorry, sorry. Is, is, it, is, it, is it about them being stretched or they have, they have refused to evolve? Well, let me just stay from, let me just stay at the side of caution, I mean, being overstretched. Okay. Uh, because we happen to go into a kind of war that we're not prepared for, talking mm. about insurgency war, which hitherto has been alien to our environment. Uh, we went into that war just at the time we were thinking we were coming out of it. We had banditry in terms of headsmen and all what not. Meanwhile, this is what started really down south, like you said. The kidnapping thing started down south. Mm. And that is like 2003, after 2003 elections, that uh, was sacrilegious in River State and mm -hmm. all whatnot. So the militants that were used had to resort to kidnap in order to make yeah. their points. And then it, it gradually moved out to the southeast. And so that there yeah, it becomes more uh, uh, escalated. And then now it, now it has now moved to north because 
it has been discovered that that was a surer way of, because this, we don't have too much of arm robbery any longer. We now discover that, that they now discover that is a surer way of um, getting things. And it's like a quick, a quick crime. It's like, let me say, a quick crime. Swoop on their victim, transaction. kick them away, mm -hmm. take them, move into the thick forest, keep them there. And because our country is so large in terms of expanse, so large, forests are so thick that even somebody's in a forex nest to you, you'll be in a village, there's a forex nest to you, people are there, you will not even know. Mm -hmm. So that's why it is, I say it is overstretched. That the issue of the okay, not, not, not to interrupt you, but yeah. the, the, when you say they are overstretched, when we talk about security agencies, we have a couple of them. Yeah. We have the army, we have the, the, um, Navy. the Navy, we have the police, we have the NSCDC, we even have some other, we have private security, we have yeah. the DSS, yeah. we have so many. So why are they overwhelmed and why should that be an excuse for us no, not to no, address no, no, this no, excuse, not, not an excuse. What I mean by stretch is what is the number compared to the, we have about, the population? Yeah, we have about 350,000 according to stat. Let's say, mm -hmm. let me be fair, for, let me say 400,000 policemen. Mm -hmm. A governor's convoy alone has about 65 yeah. policemen. A majority of them that's are a governor. attached to VIP. Yeah, that's so. a governor. <laughs> a, VIP, a, a deputy governor has about 30 mm -hmm. in his, as oh, part of, in, that's police. Then each commissioner has two, three. My brother, before he goes to court, maybe he might have two <laughs> because he's a VIP. Then we don't know how many is in the presidency. So by the time you remove plus or minus, 200,000 have left the, to go and guard the so-called VIPs. And they left the rest. What is their, what is their, even what is the, 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 the weaponry? The, the other day I was when we discussed the police. Their mental structure, are they prepared for things like this? Mm. And the unfortunate is that, it has not evolved, and like my brother said, refuse to get themselves reinvented mm -hmm. into the new challenges as to know what is available, mm -hmm. what is on ground. I'm, then, I'm if sure you talk of the army, the army, what's the, our, our, our army strength? Majority of them today are fighting this monstrous uh, uh, war mm -hmm. that we have, that, that, that we find ourselves in the northeast. Oh, let, me, let me interrupt you and say that we, we know that the security agencies have their role to play, but it seems to have evolved into a, a sort of business. To quote somebody, uh, somebody that escaped from them, they said that it's almost like they have, it was like a village business. Hundreds of kidnappers living side by side, several hundreds more, with each owing victims they raided off the road. There are analysts who agree that it is now a business in Nigeria and may prove a tougher nut for the military uh, to crack. Do you share the same thought? Let me come to you first. Oh, well, uh, it's unfortunate that they can actually uh, view that kind of uh, uh, venture as being a business, you know, but it's unfortunate. Because There's a victim yeah. speaking who saw these mm -hmm. things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah and, and, and uh, that's really, that is unfortunate because it shows that um, Nigeria, Nigerians are not are no longer really their brother's keeper. You understand? There used to there would have been a, there was a time where you know um, the community brings up a ch a, ch a child, where a community you know sees it as this is my brother, this is my sister. You are interested in what's happening with them, but now you cohabit or you stay within proximity with kidnappers, and it's not my business. You understand? You might not even know. You may not. Yes, that's what I'm saying. And you find out that there's also what they call Stockholm Syndrome. You understand? A lot of these uh, uh, victims, you know, start to have some sort of Feeling. closeness or affinity or affection, you know, for their captors, you know. And um, we see some of those quote-unquote Boko Haram girls, a lot of them eventually became brides to these people. They had children by them and were reluctant to actually leave them. You understand? So all of that is just because the system had failed them and really... People, people, you know, there's, we, 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 I think one, one, one thing I realized recently, and it's very sad, is that we have lost the ability to be alarmed. You understand? Yeah. At, at some of these things. <laughs> we've lost, agree yeah, we, we've lost the ability lost, to be yes. alarmed. So when some of these things, these are anomalies, when they occur in some other climes, the president is on it. You understand? But some of these, so like you said, you mentioned, there are some of these uh, crimes that occur in the South here, Nobody bats an eyelid. But because there are some high profile, you know, cases like the uh, Ubek chairman and his daughter, you know, there was so much, you attention know, attention given. Okay. You understand? So 
it's it really boils down. Like I said, you know, we we no longer have, we 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 not we we lost not that. Yeah, we're not alarmed. Let, let me ask you: Do you agree that quickly? Um, if this is with the thought that this is now a business, it's not just a crime alone. It's now lucrative for no, no, certain it, it, people. It's a crime. It's certainly a crime. No, I said it's not just a crime yes. alone. No, no. Of course, anything anybody goes into, it causes a business. <laughs> If people who are doing who are doing who are into drugs, I they call it their business. Uh, yes, it's it it seems to have become a business that is so lucrative because uh, deterrent is low, punishment is low. Mm -hmm. um, we have this mentality, or there's this mentality that they are more sophisticated than the security agencies. The security agencies lacks the spread, the spread to police every nook and cranny of the country. Let me just let me just tell you this. When the first high profile kidnapping happened in the South is those journalists that was coming back from Aqua mm -hmm. uh, this uh, the president when it happened, they were in the forest for about a week, five days to a week. Mm -hmm. They were moving from one place to another. Sometimes they passed villages. They would be hearing villagers in maybe people in their farms somewhere. And those people will not say anything. But what does this say about our moral? That is what I'm going. That's now. what I'm going because we now see it as either out of fear. So if they pass through a village, they won't see anything. And then even those villages may not have the communication to know that a crime has been committed and these people mm -hmm. are uh, victims, victims. Are, are, are captors. You understand? And then there are also in cases where you have collaborators from villagers. Now, what happens in Zamfara? At some point, they now discover that some village heads are in course with these bandits. And let's also face one fact. Some of these bandits are not, are not Nigerians. They come from across the borders to come into the country because of our porous borders, which never started today. Uh, they, you, you, that might, some people say that is an excuse we no, no, come up no, with. No, how see, true it's, it's and an how excuse. valid yes, is yes, it yes, that somebody who is a foreigner will have the audacity to come into a country like Nigeria yes. and organize a kidnap that people in that vicinity are not that, aware that, that's of? That's why I said yeah. there, there, there has been instances and cases of, uh, uh, what do you call it now, collaboration, with also criminal elements. Because, of course, I said it is the, uh, the rat in the house that we invite the one in the bush, that there is meat in the pot. So there are people who also mind the bet, maybe do not have the facility to carry out those cars. They invite people. And then mostly, this kidnapping along those highways, as well in the north, sincerely speaking, they, may not all, they are not all by Nigerian, by Nigeria, because that's why they can kill with impunity, they can maim with impunity, and do all that, because it started from cattle rustling. Now, they are becoming difficult to get to do the cattle rustling. They now discover that, oh, kidnapping, People is lucrative, but for me, really, I, I, I'll be very sad as to what's happened in that Kaduna Abuja highway because that is yeah. one of that should be one of the most policed yeah. Yeah. highway. Mm -hmm. Kaduna Abuja, Ka, uh, Abuja, 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 Kaduna, Abuja, Lokoja, they should be one of the highly policed highway, uh, uh, yes, highways because they are proximate, they are proximate to the federal capital, and they are all they are not roads that are if you go and check that roads, they are well made. So why that there will be that brazen kidnap of people after a point the the the, uh, the, the I mean they were able to say they have contained it, but again like I said, the terrain and topography of Nigeria and the north makes kidnapping very yeah. very so, easy. So if I may also add on the issue okay. of this being a, be being a business is because. Um, I'm a lawyer, so obviously I, I always lean on the side of the law. Where there's no deterrence, you understand, it makes it... The reason why you would want to uh, engage in a crime, you understand, is because, yes, there's the thrill, you understand, there's always there's a rush, you understand, but where there is no... You know that the chances are... How, do you even know how many people we have in Nigeria? Do you even have a profile of anybody? You understand? So if I, if I do this, the chance I'll get caught, or the chances that... Somebody, uh, somebody could get my fingerprints and can trigger my, you know, my past crimes, you know, and probably knows where I live, may be a deterrent. But because the, all of those things are not really entrenched, and even if they're entrenched, nobody's enforcing. You understand? That gives some people the audacity to continue to make it okay because, okay, this is my profession. I'll keep up for you. I'm tempted to think about the BVM. The one, that when we yeah. come out, and some persons have actually advocated yeah. it, that it's it can be utilized for me. It's an yeah, it can be used means. as yeah. a data source yeah. for Nigerians. Mm -hmm. But you know, I, 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 I was in the financial sector, you know, briefly, and I know that serious moves were made to aggressively 
take the BVM. Because initially they started with the commercial banks. But measures were taken to take this down to other you know, financial institution of it, you know, the, the microfinance banks, yeah, they don't, well, I don't think they have community banks, the microfinance banks and all the work. If, we, if they were able to achieve 90% success with that, I believe that will solve, you know, the issue of getting, of data for a lot yes, of people. people. If you have nice people's data, you understand? I think that's, that, that that's a very good place to start. Okay, let's, let's take this conversation to another direction and look at the, pay, the ransom payment. Um, it, it's like a norm now for some of our security agencies to say that no ransom was paid, but the families will say, on the other hand, that they, they paid. paid a certain amount of money. What, what do you make of this call? Because if there is a norm... Uh, encouragement that crime will not continue with this consistent payment of ransom. So, first off, what do you make of our security agency's attitude to ransom payment? They never acknowledge payment. And secondly, how can we find a way to ensure that no ransom it's is paid, paid for no, kidnapped uh, victims? See, Let me come to you. You see, there was an SSS, a retired SS official, that was kidnapped along the um, Abuja. Lokoja, no, okay, let me say, after the Lokoja, the other part of it, going to, uh, what they call it now, Okene and all this, mm. that area. I think he was kidnapped. And um, when he was laying his experience, he said, look, we will not advise anybody not to pay. Mm. Because he's an SS, retired SS official. He said, we will not advise anybody not to pay. That forget what police tell you, don't pay ransom. That he does not advise anybody not to. Well, if you can, reason, because listen, that, that he said, he said, he said this people, they are very sophisticated. They are very sophisticated. They have their laptop, they'll tell us for you for your bank uh, details, you type it in, and they know how much you have. Mm. That's how dare and scary it is. Now, will you want to, you don't know the, where you are. I, I, I will not ask, but yes, I will say, no, but I will say it is wrong to pay ransom, yes. But you don't know where your family member is. Mm. You don't know the condition upon which he is held, he or she is held. Mm. You don't know the circumstances of threat, of torture, he or she is going through. Mm -hmm. And then the police say, don't pay ransom. Meanwhile, they, behind, the police is the one that take, take this ransom. The Canadian, yeah. a Canadian that was kidnapped sometime that was released said it was the police that exchanged a ransom mm -hmm. for them. Yeah. There was a, 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 a cousin of mine that was kidnapped in Portacourt, mm -hmm. ferried, according to James' experience, kidnapped in Portacourt, fed into the creek somewhere in Bayelsa. The, the report was that they even passed through a naval checkpoint on the sea. Oh. That is, the camp is close to a naval checkpoint. I don't know, I mean, that was the, the story I got yeah. to hear. And they were kept in camp, over 300 of them in a camp. Mm. And then, this is put that we are right inside the ocean. You don't, if you know how the vast state and by is. This is quite right So you don't honest. even know where the country And then, there's somebody negotiating with you and say you should not pay him. <laughs> And then your teacher will be there. Then something yeah. is that is so something is, is something, wrong yes, that is, with yes, the yeah. of our society. There is something if, wrong with the with the entire security architecture. Mm -hmm. Because if even if look, police have helicopters. There should be surveillance. But what there's there's also the question of leadership. What let me come to you. Uh, okay. What leadership style? will best address this issue? And what do you make of government's response to this increasing cases of yeah. kidnapping? You, you we, see, we hear statements being issued every yeah, now yeah, and then yeah. with you, no action. You know, that, that's, that for me, for me, the, the posturing you know, of the government is really the reason why the ransom payment is increasing. Why? Yeah. Because, you know, um, government seems to have, it's unfortunate, but they seem to have a profiling of those that are worth the trouble. You understand? And the majority that they are, what's the English? They are collateral. They can be collateral damage. You understand? When any, when, if anybody tells a family who has, who has a family member kidnapped, and they tell you, don't pay ransom, like he said, any right-thinking, as Nigeria is, I mean, any right-thinking yeah. family member will want for that money. Why? Because if you can, if you can trust the security um, apparatus to yeah. say, OK, don't pay that ransom. We are ready to dredge the ocean. We are ready to comb the bushes. We are ready to get into the desert but to get this person out for you in 24 hours or 48 hours. You understand? Why would you jeopardize? Why would you jeopardize someone's safety? Yes. Tell them don't pay the ransom. But well, there's the instances where ransom is paid and the person is still yeah, killed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is that's so. that is an unfortunate situation. situation. Yes. But 
where somebody, for instance, oh, like let's even look at it. A lot of these people, a lot of these kidnappers, these are young people frustrated, some on different kinds of I wouldn't drugs. say frustrated. <laughs> okay, <laughs> let, let, me even, let me even bring in this part. There was this, the, the situation, the case in River State. Uh, some of the travelers who were kidnapped and later released said that these young men were saying they've gone back to kidnapping because the allowance that was promised them in the amnesty program, I think 65,000 naira, was right. no longer being paid uh, to mm -hmm. them. And as a result, that they are going to go back to kidnapping. Mm -hmm. So uh, basically, some persons have said that the 65,000 Naira is just a temporary mm -hmm. solution, not a long-term solution. Yeah, so we have this terrible. one we are contending with in the north. If this one <laughs> in the <laughs> south side comes up again, mm -hmm. what becomes of us? I, I tell you something. Let me just say this. Maybe that was part of what we were discussing backstage. The, problem, the kidnapping in River State, that is between Emoha and uh, uh, Elele, you don't know the size, but between Emoha and Elele. I know Elele quite well. Yes. Wow. Between Emoha, let's say before uni, after Uniport, between Emoha and Elele has been a record, has been there ever since. Just that, like I said, the press don't report it. Now, that, now I was traveling some time ago, and then the driver was saying, he was telling us, look, if you get to this place anything after 7 o'clock, and it showed us a, a particular police check. There are police check on that route. So what do we do? Because we I'm, actually let, don't let have much time yes. It says anymore. if you get to this place and you see only one policeman, turn around. Or one minute, just turn around. But if you see many, you can go. Now, he said what can be done in that place is arrest the whole chiefs, arrest the youth leader, arrest every so-called in, order in for that it to place stop? that he to stop. Because they all, they said, according to the driver, he said, they all know some things that are happening there. It's why by this people are brazenly on the road. Mm -hmm. And it's not a, a big stretch of, it's not like the north. It's not a big stretch of road. Quite unfortunate. Okay? But, but so, let me, let me, so just something, so, no, no, the part, the, no, no, the I, government, I really need to the government needs to, the time. government to step yeah. up, and they do not need to hide some of these things on political experiences, and then the president to dig into. I just said something now. Which somebody, which a driver that applies that whatever they told yeah. me. No, so the person to need to go further into what's happening okay, in that area. Quick thought before if we can stop really that area, time. if we can solve one part of it, I'm feel, not the God, this is the 5,000 error. I mean, how can you say because you're not supposed to have been trained? Are you right. not supposed well, to have started doing I your really business? I really need to interrupt I'm sorry. you and get yes, on I'm sorry with the, for the, that. Just, I'm told we're out of time, but I want you to chip in quickly in 30 seconds if you can. The Senate has just passed a bill, um, or a confirmed bill to tackling. Uh, kidnapping in Nigeria. It prescribes punishment for participants and those that actually carry it. Will this serve in any way knowing uh, history with, you know, obeying the law? Pacta sut servanda, which is uh, Latin for <laughs> the enforcer not wi being willing to enforce. Good, yes. As long as the, we don't have the security apparatus to ensure that that law is uh, applied to the letter, we'll just be wasting our time. And that would just be another law passed for the sake of passing. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for coming. It's my the pleasure. time is never enough, <laughs> Bobby. <laughs> All right, we'll take a break, and when we come back, we'll be talking Rocha Zukorocha and his Einek Palava. Stay with us.